Good morning, everybody. All right, it is, uh, what is it, uh, 25th of September now, I think. Um, southbound on 90, uh, Highway, California Highway 99 right now. Uh, just getting into the Fresno area. Uh, I'm going to go pick up uh, Laprino Foods load here in Lamar. I think right now would be a good time to start it. I'm not going to record, uh, show everything from here, uh, all the way from here to Laprino, or at least I don't think I will, but we'll see how long it takes to get through. Um, um, yeah, I'm going to have uh, something right here I'm going to talk about here just for shits and grins. Uh, all right, so this load I'm going to be picking up is going to Rochelle, Illinois. However, I will not be taking it to Rochelle. I have home time coming up on uh, Thursday. Yeah, Thursday the 29th for a medical appointment. And then uh, my niece is getting married on the 1st. So I'll be taking time off for those. Uh, So yeah, that food that I had yesterday when I was delivering at Hobby Lobby. So by the way, I mentioned I noticed when I was editing the video footage of that um, um, earlier. I mentioned I was going to say where I was actually going to eat at, but then I never actually talked about it after I got unloaded. So why not? Um, all right. So if you watch the Hobby Lobby video or delivery video. I ended up walking over to uh, Lillian's Barbecue, I think is what it was called, Lillian's Smokehouse or whatever. Yeah, I think that's what it was called. Um, Alright, so... I'll, I'll give you some good and the bad with that place. Alright, um, first I ordered a half rack of ribs with uh, garlic mashed potatoes and gravy and potato salad. Then on, uh, I also had a uh, pumpkin spice pudding or whatever the hell they called it. Some kind of pumpkin whatever pudding uh, as a side. I mean uh, for dessert whatever. I think it was entirely too much for me to eat because I, I can't normally eat that much as it is and I'm having a hard time with that. Even now. Um, and that was 18 hours ago, at least 18 hours ago when I ate it, so, well, yeah, and I, I'm still feeling the effects of fighting it. Now, we're going to be uh, getting on, uh, no, anyway, uh, it's going on uh, Highway 41 South, we're going to be getting on to, uh, it's not too much further down here, uh, but going back to Lillian, so, um, and I was looking at the reviews on the place, and it seemed a little bit on the questionable side. Now, a lot of the complaints seem to be about service. Um, I didn't look very close at the, at the reviews, though, closely at the reviews, but I got the impression that the main issue was uh, with service, and maybe the food was uh, not always done right. So the ribs that I got, I will say, uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't order them again. Um, yeah, the, the taste wasn't bad, but uh, I don't know what I'd say they were cooked right, and they had too much fat on them too. So, uh, and, I, and I don't do fat. It's, uh, yeah, it's hard as hell to chew, and it just, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't do that texture either. <laughs> Some people actually like it. Uh, like my friend Blake, he was talking about he actually loves fat, and like I, I, uh, I can't do that. Um, the potato salad was decent, and you know the mashed potatoes, I would say, were all right too. Uh, I do question if my, and this is hard for me to even say this, but I question if the mashed potatoes might have had a little bit too much garlic in it. But I don't know. It's I, again, it's, it's hard for me to ever say that you can put too much garlic in anything. Um, 
so that I, I don't know. It's it was. I, mean, I definitely tasted the garlic. I don't know if I'd say it was too much, but it was. I don't know. I would say it was very no, definitely noticeable. All right, now uh, looks like this guy. Oh no, he's getting off here at Kings Canyon Road. All right, the next exit down here is Highway 41 South. We're gonna be taking 41 straight on down into Lamar. And in fact, we can just make a right turn. Uh, either a right turn or a right exit when it's time to go over to Laprino. Uh, I tend to do the right turn before you get to Laprino and then there'll be a left turn immediately after that. And that's actually the street that Laprino was on. Alright, so food-wise, I, I wouldn't say I was impressed with the place. I would have to echo what other people said in the Google reviews on that place. However, service-wise, that was another story. Uh, there were complaints about service in the reviews, but my opinion, uh, I thought the service was great, at least from the server I had. Uh, the server I had, her name was Devin. Uh, if you guys are from that area, she's... Uh, Kind of shortish uh, Japanese and American mix, so uh, from what I can best yeah, uh, tell, uh, she was uh, she was very nice and uh, great 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 service. So uh, she was the one shining point in that. So I, you know, kudos to her on that. I don't know uh, who all these other people were complaining about with service, but. I thought Devin was on point, so yeah, no complaints at all about her. And I, I gave her a little extra tip too because of it. All right, so, um, so we're gonna, I, I, yeah, I do have. Uh, let's see, I want to talk about famous people encounters. Maybe get up some dialogue with you guys too, or you guys can share your experiences. Who have you encountered or whatever that, you know, you know, what was the situation? Or even if you didn't actually interact with them, but you see them in person, you know, not actually at a performance uh, thing, but just in everyday life, whatever. Uh, that's what I'm looking for. But, uh, all right, so I got a laundry list of people here. Now, mind you, I grew up in Barstow, California. Barstow is right about halfway between uh, L.A. and Las Vegas. Get a lot of famous people going through there, and a lot of famous people stop there for, you know, for a bite to eat or restroom break or gas or whatever they're doing on the way uh, back and forth between the two or wherever they're going. So, I guess I will, I'm going to do these all in alphabetical order. And I'll try to explain the, the situation and how I encountered each of these people. Just, you know, just for storytelling, something to talk about, I guess. All right, so first one is going to be Alfonso Ribeiro. Now, way back when, before I joined the military, which was way back before I became a trucker. I've been a trucker for six years, and I actually did a full 20 years in the Air Force prior to that, as you guys uh, who regularly watch me already know. Uh, prior to that, I worked at the, you know, at one point in time, at the McDonald's in Barstow. Uh, the one that's right behind the pilot truck stop on the way, on the southwest end of town. Alright, so, Alfonso, I always heard he was a bit of a dick. From, uh, from my friends because he would regularly come in with his girlfriend and um, I, I don't know I wouldn't really say I had any real personal experience with him but I know there was one time our um, I, I guess our level one manager whatever her you know not the store manager but the one right below her um, I knew she had the hots for Alfonso and yeah, there was one time she even invited him to come back to the kitchen and make his own uh, burger just so he could know it was done right and all that. And, uh, you know, just for the fun of interacting with him too, I guess. But uh, I don't know what his thoughts were on that, but it, 
Yeah, he, one of my good friends, though, uh, they, uh, I know we interacted with him, and he didn't, uh, he, he wasn't very uh, impressed with him. I'll just say that. All right, next one. Andre Agassi. Tennis greats. Um, now, oh yeah, also, if you're not really familiar with uh, Alfonso Ribeiro before this, uh, Alfonso was in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air with uh, Will Smith. Uh, wasn't he also in uh, Silver Spoons? Yeah, I used to watch that all the time when I was a kid. You know, with Ricky Schroeder. I want to say Al uh, Alfonso was in that too, but I could be wrong. All right, anyway, uh, Andre Agassi, Hall of Fame tennis player. Uh, um, all right. I used to hang out all the time with a bunch of friends in Barstow in a parking lot in town that was basically a defunct. Uh, let's see if you guys uh, you guys might remember these places. Uh, if you do, you're, I know that you're at least as old as I am. Alpha Beta Grocery Stores and TGNY. Uh, there's a parking lot in Barstow that used to have both of those stores in that same lot. Anyway, they, they both went to fun, both companies as a whole. Yeah, they were chain, um, chain stores and they both went to fun, as far as I know. Uh, anyway, well, been, uh, me and a bunch of friends would always hang out over there. Uh, down and we go cruising up and downtown or go find a place to party, whether it be at somebody's house, out in the desert, or just go to a nightclub or whatever. It didn't matter. Anyway, regularly, like... Uh, numerous times we'd see this uh what color was a white said so many years ago i think a white lamborghini we'd always see going up and downtown uh you know so many times and i found out that it was uh it was andre i didn't ever interact with him myself but one of my one of my friends there told me it was andre because Apparently he and his then girlfriend at the time, he wasn't with Steffi Groff at the time, he was with, uh, that's, Steffi Groff is his, his current wife, and she's also a Hall of Fame tennis player. Uh, he was with somebody else, and yeah, this was prior to Steffi. But he used to always stop at the, I want to say Carl's Jr. in town, over on the east end of town, right off of I-15. Um, I always heard he was a really nice guy. I've heard other people say he was an asshole too, but everybody I know in town said he was a really, uh, really nice guy. Uh, they all loved him. And, uh, and, yeah, and they said it was him, but, you know, it was, uh, that same white Lamborghini would always be in their parking lot, and it was always, it always coincided with him being there, so. Uh, yeah, so, what about, what I like to, meet him though because I played bar I played tennis in high school uh, varsity tennis and I, I even tried out for tennis in college now I tried to walk on uh, and I almost beat the number I was supposed to play against their number nine uh, I think it was a number nine guy and I almost beat him so I almost had I came real close to uh, possibly having a chance but I didn't quite make it. I just barely got beat by the guy. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it's, I remember growing up too when I was in high school playing, uh, or even in junior high, playing a lot of tennis. Uh, there was one point in time when, you know, and Andre still had all his hair when he was young. He had that wavy hair. I remember me being a stupid kid and uh, fashioning my own hair after him. You know, getting a uh, uh, semi curl, whatever you call it, wave perm. Uh, just to emulate him. Uh, I don't know. I, I think it's stupid mi uh, mimicking or emulating uh, famous people just because they, they are or whatever. But yeah, I don't know. If you just if you just like their style, you know, forget about them being famous. And you just like something about their style that you know that you like, then great. All right, next one. Ben Affleck. Uh, ben, uh, I was in the Air Force. I went TDY, as we call it, temporary duty, to Nellis Air Force Base for one of the 
exercises up there. I don't remember if it was red flag or green flag. Yeah, red flag is basically an air combat exercise, and then green flag, or the blue flag, one of the two. One of the, the green flag I want to say was is a more of an electronic uh, warfare type of uh, combat training. Yeah, and I, the, I, the airplanes I worked on were EC 130s. They were in the air, electronic warfare uh, environment. Anyway, while we're there, we're staying at one of the you know, smaller motel just uh, right behind the MGM Grand over there on uh, Koval Lane. Um, if you guys know where the Las Vegas Strip is, where all the big motels are at, now the MGM Grand is on the south um, south end of town, uh, right at the corner of Tropicana and Las Vegas Boulevard, or the Strip as we all call it. Now, now mind you, I grew up in Barstow, so I tended to know more about Las Vegas than a lot of other people uh, who aren't from there. But. Uh, yeah, and I also used to run a Walmart account and do a lot of deliveries to the Walmart stores there in town. But anyway, yeah, if you go east on Tropicana from the Strip, just past the MGM Grand, yeah, you can turn left on this street there called Coval Lane. Uh, there was a motel we stayed, we were staying at there. So keep going down Tropicana, and you would have the uh, Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. I, uh, yeah, we were, a lot of us were over there just gambling or whatever. I was playing Let It Ride, that's my favorite game to play. And look over in the high roller section and who do I see? I see Ben Affleck just playing by himself at a blackjack table. Uh, he, yeah, and he, he, he's very well documented for, um, being banned from a lot or a lot or all of the casinos there because he is so good at it. Uh, he counts cards and they, you know, and he wins a lot because of uh, his ability to count cards. And so yeah, a lot of the casinos won't let him on the property anymore. I, I don't know who will, but um, a lot of them don't. All right, next one. This will be the Eagle Eye cast. Uh, the movie Eagle Eye. Um, now, I did say something about venues, like, I meant, like, in a sense of concerts and stuff, but... Now, the movie Eagle Eye, it's a Shia LaBeouf, Michelle Monaghan, Billy Bob Thornton, Rosario Dawson, and, uh, what's his name? He, uh, Ethan, Evan, uh, I can't remember his last name. Um, the one who's in, she, in what, um, uh, that Jennifer Love Hewitt movie, yeah, I can't remember... I can't remember the name of that movie. It's one of those coming of age party kind of movies that he was in. Anyway, um, I was actually an extra in that movie myself. Uh, again, I was I was in the Air Force. I was working at Marche Reserve Base, and these scenes were all shot. Uh, there were the scenes that I was uh, involved in. They were all shot right there at Marche or at the DHL. Uh, what used to be the DHL. Uh, Air Logistics Facility on the south end of March. Uh, the DHL facility is now uh, is uh, now an Amazon warehouse. But anyway, uh, now you guys might recognize a scene in there where Rosario Dawson's character lands in a helicopter, you know, in front of a hangar, and then she gets out and meets somebody. Uh, well, anyway, in that same scene, you'll see a, an F-16 fighter jet inside a hangar, and you'll see two guys walking kind of generally toward the camera uh, as they show the F-16, like basically underneath the wing of the F-16 coming toward the camera. Those two guys were myself and uh, and our group training manager uh, for, our, for our unit. And, uh, it, it, I was in uniform. They asked for volunteers who wanted to, who were interested in being in the movie. You know, just it was just something interesting to do, see what the experience was like to me. Uh, uh, they had us doing like several different things. They were trying to make it look busy, pretty much, like having people walking here and there, or whatever. Um, just kind of fake. But anyway, they. 
I remember they when they first when we were prepping or they were prepping the scene, whatever. We were all standing outside the hangar. There was um, probably like at least a good eight of us, all in uniform. There, all all of us actually served in the uh, were in the Air Force. Um, well, was, um, we're all hanging out out there, and while we're waiting for them to tell uh, come in and tell us what to do, Rosario's right there. She just she had just gotten out of uh, a different white van uh, from the one that we all went over there in. Uh, there are two PAs. And uh, they were, you know, they were helping her prep. And then once she got through getting prepped, uh, she came up and greeted all of us. Hey, how you doing? I'm Rosario. Nice to meet you. Uh, she was the one who was cool. Yeah, she was very friendly. Uh, in fact, I was even laughing because uh, at one point there was this one particular guy, I can't remember what unit he was with in on base, but I used to bowl against him on uh, in our intramural bowling league. Uh, well, he was a uh, you know, bit on the chubbier side and had big hands. And when she went to shake his hand, she, uh, she jokingly made a comment, oh, you got big hands. And everyone with their dirty minds, uh, of course, <laughs> snickered about it. Uh, but, you know, she was, that was the only time I ever even saw her, uh, you know, just that one morning when she was filming that, that scene and I never saw her again. The rest of the weekend, I was over at the DHL facility the entire time. I was dressed up as a Dayton Airport police officer. Um, now, they, we were all in a green room while some of the other people there were just kind of mingling, hanging out, watching stuff. And, uh... Well, we, I was supposed to be in a particular scene, but they didn't, they never called us out from the green room, so a lot of us never made it. Uh, you know, so I don't know what would have happened there. Uh, there was one other scene that I was in, but I got cut out of the frame. Uh, that's a scene where Shia LaBeouf and Michelle Monaghan are being chased along the, the conveyor system at the DHL facility by Billy Bob Thornton's character. And when they're doing this, they end up escaping from him by going down this spiral slide. Now, what, what happens is the, the packages normally go through that conveyor system, and then they get sorted out, and they go down these spiral slides, and then there's a, like a roller system, like a, a roller conveyor belt kind of thing, I guess I would say, like a slide. That would, uh, that would make the box of slide all the way down to the end. And there'd be a pallet right by uh, next to the end of the, the slide, and uh, so the the loaders would just pile up all the all the boxes on the pallet, and then when they're done, they'd uh, wrap it all up, and then it'd be ready to put inside the trailer that's at that same dock door. So the slide that they went down, the very next one over, right next to them, at the other end of it, was myself and another uh, another guy. Uh, I don't remember what unit he. I think he worked at our commissary or BX or something like that, if I remember right. Uh, but we were supposed to pretend to wrap up the pallet with cellophane, and we didn't know what was going on. They just told us what we were doing, and uh, they had no idea what the what was going on with the scene. So the first take, I remember them, uh, I remember doing the wrapping and uh, I'm thinking like, this is stupid. Like, these are a bunch of empty boxes that are all addressed to Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck and whatever other Disney characters, if I remember right. And, uh, but the boxes, because of them being totally empty, when we'd wrap around, when we go wrapping around it, like, you know, going around the pallet, the pallet would rotate and move as well, and my, yeah, that, this looks realistic. Uh, guess again, yeah, I thought it was stupid, but uh, not to mention when we first see them go, coming down the slide, I'm like, what the hell? So uh, we both uh, kind of act out a little bit and like start looking at each other, doing double takes. I'm like, what the hell is this all about? You know, kind of thing. Well, then they. They cut, and then they do a retake, and then they tell us, you guys did not see them. Just pretend that they're not even there, just do, uh, just wrap the pallet, act like they're not even there. I'm like, yeah, that, that sounds really realistic. 
I have a feeling that maybe that had something to do with us getting cut out of the scene because they probably realized it really did look stupid. I, I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, I didn't ever have any personal interactions with uh, the other, with any of the actors. I never saw the, uh, Ethan, I think his name was, uh, Evan, Ethan, whatever. I never saw him in person at all. I know he's in the movie, though. Uh, Billy Bob I saw several times. He was always in this golf cart, uh, getting driven in the golf cart uh, between his uh, trailer and the sets, with, uh, seemingly, when I'd be walking. Um, you know, and I even walked by, and I'm in my Air Force uniform, even, um, as he's on his way back to his, uh, his trailer. And he just kind of looked at me, and uh, I, I don't know if he was just... Uh, he just seemed like he kept to himself. Now, I don't know if he... Uh, it's, I know there's a lot of work involved with uh, trying to memorize lines and all that kind of stuff. Rehearsing and stuff, but... And I'm also sure they get too many starstruck people who uh, want to distract them and all that. And I, just another person to me. I'm, you have a job to do, you're just well known for your job. And you have much, much, much better paid too. So, never had any real, um, let's see, this isn't, uh, is this the turn of what? Uh, no, a little further down. Alright, the other, uh, but now, sorry, I never inter interacted with him, but I got good vibes about him. Uh, when he was doing that shoot scene there, I could tell that he was actually getting into his, uh, getting into the work and having a, actually having fun doing the shoot. And uh, later on, yeah, when we were all uh, on lunch, uh, there was that lunch trailer that everybody ate at, uh, all the extras and whatever would eat at. Uh, when I, I got through eating and I came back out and. Uh, on my way back out, I see Shy out there playing uh, like touch football with uh, all the, a bunch of kids that were there. So I was like, oh, that was pretty cool of him. To, uh, he seemed like a fun-loving kind of guy, like someone I uh, I wouldn't have, mind uh, chit-chatting with or whatever, or hanging out with. Uh, he was the only uh, one out with out of that group that I would say gave me that kind of uh, vibe. Alright, so that's enough with the Eagle Eye cast. Next one. This will be uh, Edward Burns. Famous for playing uh, Private Ryburn in Saving Private Ryan. Uh, she's all, he's also in another movie. Uh, what is that? She's the One? Uh, yeah, I want to say She's the One. There's some, something like that. He's also in that one. Now, this is funny because... I'm in the Air Force, and I'm on my way to Italy. Uh, you know, I was stationed in Tucson at Davis Mountain Air Force Base, and we had about a dozen of us flying out of Tucson to go to Aviano Air Base, Italy. We, don't, we were all on our way to, we were flying commercially from Tucson to Venice, and then it's only like a 40, uh, 30, about 40 minute drive from Venice to uh, the, the air base that we were always at. Yeah, you're asking right, dude. Um, ah, flat tire. Okay, so, I'm on my way out there now. I ended up, uh, we all ended up flying out together to, uh, I think, DFW, Dallas Fort Worth, if I remember right, on American Airlines. Once we got to DFW, though, it was really random who ended up going where. Like, some of us would fly over to Amsterdam, some would fly to Paris, like Charles de Gaulle or Orly Airport. Um, maybe somebody would go through London, Gatwick, or Heathrow. Uh, and then there was me going uh, by myself. Nobody else in that group going on the same flight as me over to Frankfurt, Germany. I'd never been to Germany before, and, and on top of that, I had like a six-hour layover there, if I remember right. 
And when I when I finally got to Frankfurt, not one person English speaking at all, from what I could tell. Everywhere, everybody I saw anywhere was speaking some foreign language, whether it be German or whatever their native language was. So, um, yeah, there was nobody at all for me to socialize with whatsoever. Um, yeah, I ended up um, having a bite to eat and drinking and stuff there at the, the bar that was right by my, my connecting flight's gate. And then when it's, it's getting close to time for my uh, my flight to start boarding, uh, we were going to fly a puddle jumper that we had to, uh, we had to uh, go down the air stairs and get on a tram that, uh, you know, or a shuttle bus thing that actually drove us out to the aircraft. And we just went up uh, a small set of stairs to get in the aircraft. Um, well, anyway, when I get over the gate, I come across two guys who were clearly American, speaking American English to each other. Uh, I don't remember what the conversation was, but they were just, sound like just having some random, uh, regular social kind of conversation, though. The one sound um, turned out to be Edward. Um, he looked very much like he could have been military. So, I, you know, I was going to go up to them and ask, them, hey, well, what are you guys up to? You on your way to Vicenza or Aviano or Camp Darby or somewhere else? Or, you know, I figured he was in the military or something. And you know, I was just wanting someone to talk to who could actually speak English. You know, just to, to bullshit with them. And they, they never stopped talking. Uh, it was Edward, and then I assume his PA. It was a heavier set white guy with, uh, his hair was definitely not air, um, military rig. So, like, that's what I thought peculiar. Like, he, you know, Edward definitely looked like he could pass for military, but the other guy had no way in hell. And I got to really wonder, what the, what is up with this connection here? Why would they both be traveling together and on military orders with the other guy clearly not military? Um, but anyway, uh, let's see, no, I'm not there yet. Um, Get, um, now and I get on, and we end up getting on the, the shuttle bus. I get on there first, and not long afterward, uh, Edward and his PA get on there, and they're they're real, real close, like within like five feet of me, and non-stop talking with each other, and like so, like I never had a chance to interact. They just, I wasn't gonna just barge right into their conversation and start talking to them, and. I didn't even know it was Edward at first. I didn't, like I said, I still thought he was just some random guy, but he started, once I was on the bus, I was like, man, this guy looks really familiar. Um, I swear I've seen him before. But I, but I, when I first thought that, I was thinking maybe I saw him at Aviano before, because that wasn't my first time going to Aviano. Because um, my, my unit was continuously deployed there for nine years. Almost half our fleet was there at all times for an entire nine-year period. So, yeah, it was like a home away from home. It wasn't until I was already on the aircraft and uh, I think in the second row of the economy section. And I see him and his PA uh, take seats in the business class area afterward. And I started to realize, oh, wait a minute. Now I'm putting two and two together. They're sitting up there and... I know I've seen him before. I started putting two and two like, uh, this guy's an actor, isn't he? It's like, and I, I swear I've seen, I was thinking Saving Private Ryan, but I, yeah, I was, yeah. I think this light up here, by the way, is the one I'm gonna turn right at. Um, anyway, yeah, I finally get to, to Aviano, and I start looking, and I'm like, I look up Saving Private Ryan on IMDB, and I'm like, Holy shit, that was Edward Burns. That I was about ready to talk to him, not even knowing it was him. But like I said, the only reason I didn't was that he and his PA never stopped talking to each other. Alright, so that's it for Edward. Next one, James Woods. 
guys to watch the Scary Movie series. Uh, he's, he plays the priest in that movie. And, uh, like Scary Movie 3, one of my favorite scenes in that. Yeah, where they're making fun of um, uh, The Exorcist. And James Woods plays the, the father in that movie. Uh, well, anyway, yeah, well, it was a bunch of car club friends of mine. And I, we were all on our way up to Las Vegas. And, uh, yeah, this is, yeah, for sure, it's the street I want. Right where you get to the Lower City Limit sign is the one I like to turn right on. You can also go straight down the road and use the uh, the off-ramp that, uh, that's up uh, coming up next. I just personally go this way, though. The milk trucks all go this way as well, by the way. Now, we're going to turn right here onto 19 and a half Avenue. All right, anyway, uh, James Woods, now, you know, there's at least a good, uh, close to a dozen of us in my car club. We were all on our way up to Vegas, and we stopped in Baker, you know, about halfway between Barstow and the Nevada line, and we stopped at the Mad Green Cafe, and I grab a bite to eat on the way up there. And then it turned out James was uh, right in front of us. Uh, he was with his PA, or I assume his PA. Uh, we didn't interact with him. We just saw him, and uh, one of the you know one of the women there was saying, uh, "Hey, it's James Woods in front of us." And, oh, okay, cool. Um, then he even was sitting in a, sitting at a table real close by to where ours was. We just went about our business. He went out. Uh, went about his though. Um, you know, just don't make it all starstruck with uh, with people. Um, they say they're. Just because they're rich and famous doesn't mean that they're God. Uh, they just, you know, either really good at what they do, put a lot of dedication and hard work in to get where they're at, like any normal person who's uh, great at their profession, or they do it just from looks or from dumb luck or something. You know? All right, right up here on the right, we're going to turn. All right, so that's enough for James Woods. Uh, let's continue some more of this when we get uh, when we get done checking in. I'll keep my eye on the car there. Okay, you usually need to know your license plate number for your tractor. Since I'm in a new truck, I'm going to have to uh, I'm going to have to get that information down because I haven't memorized this truck's license plate yet like I did my Peterbilt. You may or may not need the uh, you may or may not need your uh, uh, pickup information. Sometimes they just give you the sheet and and call it good, but other times, uh, sometimes depending on who's working there, they might want your pickup info. All right, guys, we're gonna check in now. Um, so it turns out I don't even have a front license plate on this truck yet, and he does need the license plate info. I had to actually use the registration card and get the info off of it. It's not a normal registration number that I see on Oklahoma plates. Usually Oklahoma truck license plates have two letters and four digits. Uh, what I have on my registration there is just six digits though. So I don't know if that's some new thing that Oklahoma's doing or maybe it's just the fact that it's a brand new truck and they might not have the actual plates for it yet. Um, I'll have to double check with our permits lady. That's something I forgot to notice uh, previously. So I'll, I'll ask her, man, there's a shitload of milk trucks here right now. This is uh, more than normal. Yeah, that's why I didn't want to come here until uh, it was about time for a drop, uh, my drop dead time because these guys have been busy Every time I've been coming here, they've been busy where um, 
trailers have not been ready to go until dock out time. Uh, I see two JCT trailers sitting in dock doors right there, or at least one. Uh, yeah, one, one sitting up there in door two, and I wouldn't be surprised if that's mine. Okay, we're going to park right here next to Stevens, and uh, right up there on the bottom floor on the other side, uh, to the left of the, the extension there next to uh, dock door two is where we're going to check in at. Alright guys, we checked in, and as soon as I got back to the truck, I was uh, told to go ahead and dock in the door five, set it at minus ten. And uh, putting low locks in the back. I don't know, I think we're there. Sliding my tandems right now. Uh, I was hoping to get a good opportunity to show you some of the differences between a Hirsch box spec Freightliner and a JCT spec Freightliner because the one right next to me is a JCT spec, and uh, the one that I'm in is a Hirsch box spec. Alright, so uh, U turn set up into a straight back. Now, I didn't pre cool because I figured it, there was a possibility it could be a dropping hook. Let's get our windows open.
get our tandem slid. Probably gotta drive forward to get it out of the pin though. There we go. Now we'll back up till we hit the slide tool. Yeah, I know my side door is open. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but I'm intentionally leaving it open because I need to put my slide tool away when I get through doing this. Let's go check out now. And I notice I pulled uh, I pulled all the way up away from the door, and the other JCT driver was able to get docked in while I was doing what I need to do. I don't you don't need to be blocking dock doors to do stuff when someone else waiting for your door. So watch you know, watch you know, mind your manners when you're doing uh, when you're docking out, guys. I see it all the time where drivers uh, just sit there and lollygag, do paperwork, and slide tandems, close doors, and all that other kind of shit while they're still in the door, and someone's sitting there waiting for them. I'm waiting for them to clear the door so they can get in there. It might not seem like it's much, uh, much of a big deal if it's only a few minutes, but um, remember, you got unloaders or loaders on the other side of that dock door that uh, might be waiting for someone else to bump the dock so they can get started too and they have a lot of work to do as well so don't be uh, don't hold other people up if you don't absolutely need to alright this is a heavy load 43991 uh, loads out of here are always heavy so expect that I've never done a load out of here that was less than 40,000 maybe did one that was uh, but it was a lactose load it's a dry load of lactose. Uh, mo oh, that was only one time, though. Uh, I want to get my weights here. All right, we got eleven seven-ish. Looks like eleven seven twenty. We'll say pull forward. I want to know how, if I'm gonna have to. Uh, now right now is the best time to know if I need rework. Now look like we'll, yeah, we'll be fine here. Looks say uh, it's on the heavy side, but right at forty-five thousand. Um, yeah, that's less than thirty-four on the drives. I'm not getting. I'm, not, I'm only indicating. No, I can't. Uh, I have to be stationary. Looks like 70, about 78,000. It's moving a bit. Now we'll call it 78 ish. That's about 33,000 on the tandems, and so I think it uh, looks like we're going to be fine on the um, on the weights. So I'll, I'll scale it anyway just because I'm dropping it. Alright, I'm going to pull forward. I'm going to send my departure info. I know my weights are good. So I'm going to go ahead and send the loaded call right away. So now I need to send departure call anyway, but uh, generally we don't send loaded call until after we scale it and verify that it's good to go first. Um, I know their scale is good enough, so I know that it's... Uh, I know it's going to scale okay. Uh, I've never had to get a uh, load reworked here either. Okay, we're ready to roll. Um, most drivers, uh, if, I'm, if I was going to San Bernardino, uh, well, I am going to San Bernardino actually, but a lot of our drivers, when they come out of here and go to San Bernardino, are apt to just 
get on 41 South, which is right here next to us. Take it all the way uh, straight down to I-5 in Gentleman City. And then take five across the grapevine over into the LA Basin and take the 210 freeway across. I don't intend to like doing that. Um, yeah, there are drawbacks, there are, pay, yeah, there are pros and cons. Uh, you might not have quite as much terrain. Well, you do have, to have plenty of terrain there, but you also have a lot of trucks to deal with as well. I tend to prefer going, uh, going over to Bakersfield. You know, I basically go over to uh, Tolaire and scale my load there instead of in Lost Hills. And take Highway 58 and Highway 14 down to 138. Or actually Pear Blossom Highway first and then 138. Uh, you hit Pear Blossom Highway down on the south end of Palmdale. Um, it's, it's not many more miles uh, and it's a lot less headache. Uh, you do got plenty of terrain going through the Tehachapi Mountains, and, um, but so be it. Alright, um, I think might as well finish up on the, let's see, I got, yeah, I don't know. Uh, how about I'll, uh, I don't want to make this video too long, and it already is pretty long, so because of uh, all the stories about the uh, famous people encounters uh, I still got at least about seven six or seven more famous people I can talk about uh, I'll go ahead and wait on uh, on the next on an upcoming video to finish talking about them all right how's that uh, so we don't have this drag on too long all right we're gonna come on car thank you we're making a left turn on to eastbound 198 up here in a second. Take that over into Visalia and get on 99 south from there and then we'll stop in till later. Scale my load, get a restroom and bring a drink break and all that. And then uh, off to San Bernardino we go to drop this load for somebody else. Alright, um, that said, I'm going to go ahead and call this one a day, right? You guys, uh, y'all have a great day. Uh, may or may not do a video, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know. Could end up doing one of dropping in the drop yard. Uh, just so you guys can get a, a, a current, you know, a recent video of how things are looking at our drop yard. And I can maybe even finish talking about those famous people in that video too. Uh, yeah, sounds good. So, we'll do that then, alright? How's that? Alright y'all, uh, alright I was getting on to 198 eastbound here, I'm going to call this one a day, alright, you all have a great day and we'll see you in San Bernardino.